Hey, it's Maria here from HockeyTrainingPro.com. I'm a hockey strength and conditioning specialist. Today I'm going to give you a couple things that I see in athletes who lack hip mobility, but they've become master compensators. So I'll show you what they do, uh, when we want to work mobility, when we don't want to push it, and, and what we can do to maybe help gain a little more movement. So a couple things we might see in a, a skater that lacks mobility or a goalie that lacks mobility, you know, when they're doing split squats and they get down in this position, they might be really extended in their lumbar spine. So their hip flexor or one of their hip flexors, the rectus femoris is attaching right up here. If it's very tight as they bend their knee, it's going to pull their pelvis forward. So their torso would come forward, but they, you know, use their back extensors to keep their chest up and, and that gives them big extension. So we want to try to work on that mobility a little bit, but also we're going to give them permission to, you know, let their torso angle be here as they're doing split squats and use the mobility that they have rather than torque themselves into extension. But you know, the same thing, when they're striding on the ice, they don't have that extension. They're gonna be working a lot in their lower back. You might actually see the muscles right here really bulge. So in the low back, you know, not much, but up here on either side of the spine, two big, uh, you know, extensor muscles sticking out and really overdeveloped. That's like, that's like you've developed another glute up here, so you got glutes here, and now you got another set of glutes up here. So one of the simple things we do, you know, roll on the lacrosse ball here in the front of your hip. Work on your hip flexor mobility, but with that bent knee, but keeping a neutral spine. So not, again, not letting the spine extend like that. In goalies who lack hip, uh, hip internal rotation, you're going to see a narrow butterfly and they're probably going to get a little bit more torque on their knee as well as they try to get that flare that their body just really doesn't have. So a couple of things that we can do to work on that, um, you know, our supine hip internal rotation. So just here, feet flat, bringing the knees in but not forcing it. So if you're doing any of these movements and you're getting sort of a pinching or a jamming in the front of your hip, or you, know, you might even feel like some of our athletes, when we test them or when, they, when they're squatting, they just, it's like, what, what do you feel? I, I just feel stuck. That suggests that there's some kind of impingement. And a lot of times we'll bring them hands and knees. We do this in their initial assessment and see how far back they can get without rounding this low back. So if they can sit back nice and deep um, without any problem, then we would be suspicious if they're having trouble with mobility that, you know, it might just be um, a tightness or it might be a stability issue. But if they're in here and they get to here and then they can't get any further without tucking their tail under, rounding their back, and, and it's not a stretch they feel, they just feel stuck, like they can't go any further, or even they might tell you, well, I, it pinches in here, it pinches. But then we can try, you know, widening the knees a little bit, see if that creates a little bit more room to work around that hip uh, impingement. But we're not going to keep forcing them into that type of sort of bony block or just, just stuck feeling. And if it continues, you know, we'll still do some connective tissue work, but if that doesn't loosen up pretty quickly with some of our regular mobility, then we're going to refer them on to probably a sport physiotherapist who has really good assessment skills, who can get in there and see, okay, maybe this joint capsule is just really tight, so it's jamming the, the um, head of the femur into that hip joint, and, and that's what's giving you a problem, and they can do some manual techniques to get it moving in there nicely or they might work on that a bit and you still have the same symptoms. And that suggests maybe this is a bony impingement. Maybe we need to go get that looked at before you keep jamming, 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 and then creating some real degeneration in the joint, which could even require surgery to repair. 
So those are a few of the compensation patterns that we see in hockey players. There are lots more. You guys have lots of ways to compensate. Uh, but I hope that helps you out. And it's sort of what to do and what to look for if, if you realize that you've been doing these crazy weird things. This is Maria from HockeyTrainingPro.com. My mission is to help 10,000 players win more games with fewer injuries. I want to get 10 of you into the NHL in the next 10 years and have one of you win the Stanley Cup. How would that be?